Happy Earth Day, everyone. Earth Day is a day when we think about our world and we think about things we can do to help our Earth. One of the things we can do is reuse objects. That means don't throw it away, but give it a new life do something else with that object so that it doesn't just go in the garbage, which eventually just goes in a big pile called a landfill. Today, I'm going to show you how you can reuse objects to make your own Robbie the Robot. So remember Robbie, here he is. You might have been able to tell that my Robbie the Robot is not actually a robot. He's made out of a box. And you can make your own today out of things that you probably have at home, even if you haven't been out and about for a really long time. To make a Robbie the Robot, you're gonna need a box, a pair of scissors, some tape, and some aluminum foil. Any box that you have at home will work. You want a box that's about the size of a shoe box. So you could use an actual shoe box or you could use like a smaller Amazon box. I know I get boxes that size from Amazon a lot. This box is from Target. It's about this big. but it can be a very small box too. You probably just don't want a gigantic box because your goal would be to cover this in foil to kind of make it look like a robot. And you just don't really want to use that much foil to um, cover a giant, giant box. Okay, I'm gonna show you the secret of how my Robbie the Robot works. So first of all, we know that there's a hole in his head that's where I have been putting the numbers that go in his head, right? Boop. But then how does the number change? Well, here's the secret. In here, in his head, is a little baggie. Do you see this little plastic baggie here? I have attached that baggie into the top so that the number, it's hard to see on the camera, but the number can go into the baggie and stop. It doesn't go all the way down. But the baggie doesn't take up the whole hole here. It's just attached to the back of that opening. So you could still fit something else in there, I guess, if you wanted to. The baggie has to be kind of hidden so that people can't see it. That's the whole point, right? It's kind of like a magic trick. The other thing that makes Robbie work is that my Robbie has a giant hole in the back of him. I cut this here so that I could put a new number in the back really easily. And it's, um, again, kind of like magic. It's I can do it really fast and no one will see me do it. At the bottom, he is open too, because that is what happens when I put the number in here, it kind of falls to the bottom, and then it's sitting on whatever Robbie is sitting on, right? So I kind of have three openings, one at the top, one at the back, and one at the bottom. Now my box came with an opening at the bottom, so I didn't have to do much there. The only cutting I had to do was in the back and in the top. My new box isn't really like that. My new box has this kind of opening. So I'm gonna have to cut off all of the sides. I'm sorry, not all the sides, these flaps. I'm gonna have to cut those off and that will give me a nice open back where I can put a number in. 
If you have a box like me and that's what you're going to do, make sure you have an adult help you with that because cutting cardboard can be really difficult and really dangerous. So ask an adult to help you. Okay, so see how I have cut off just those flaps that were on that one side of the box. I didn't cut any other holes in the box yet. This will be the back of my new robot. Now, I told you that we need to cut a hole in the head of the robot for the numbers. So again, you're gonna want an adult to help you with this. It doesn't matter how big or small the hole is, as long as you can fit a small number card in the top. My hole in the top of my box is about this big. Um, you can see it next to my hand there. Um, it Again, it doesn't really matter how big or small it is, just as long as you can fit that number card in there. This was just the shape that was easy for me to cut. So that's what I ended up um, putting in the head. Now, the last thing is that on this box, the bottom is there, right? Like, so I, if I put a card in his head like this, it would just fall. And if I wasn't holding it or tilting it, it would just fall and it would sit there in the box. So then if I were to lift up my robot, there would be no number falling out. So I want to cut some of the bottom off so that it can fall all the way out. Just like I have on this box, there's the opening in the back, but then the entire bottom is open. So when I lift him up, the number is sitting on whatever surface Robbie is sitting on. Okay, so I cut a hole in the bottom too. I didn't cut the entire bottom off, but um, the space is big enough that if I put a number card in the top and it falls down, you can't see on my counter here, but the number comes all the way out of the box. So um, when I lift up, that's what you see. Now, actually, the point is that the number won't fall all the way through. You're just trying to make people think that a card fell all the way through. So now that I have my box cut, I have those three spaces that I cut, I can do whatever I want to it to turn it into a robot. When I picture a robot, I always picture something like metal, um, or silver. And that's why I covered my Robbie with foil. You can also do that. You would just need to take a sheet of foil. And again, maybe have your parents help you with this, but you're going to cut it and you're going to tape it to your robot. All I did on my Robbie was cut the foil and put some tape, I don't know if you can see all the places where I taped him, but there's tape like along here and along here and along here. I had to use several pieces of foil in different sizes and tape them on, um, but all I used was foil and regular scotch tape. If you don't have foil at home or you wanna do something else to your box to make it look like a robot, that's great too. You can cover him in wrapping paper. You can just draw on the box if that's easier for you. You can cover him in maybe you have like scrapbook paper or something like that. Anything will work because it's your robot and we're just trying to use materials that we found around the house in order to make this. Something that I thought was kind of fun to do to my robot was to add paper to give him features. So like I did eyebrows and a mouth with paper. I happened to have actual googly eyes at home. Um, if you have googly eyes, by all means, use those on your robot. But if you don't have them, of course, just draw some eyes on. I used paper for a bow tie here. And then again, I happened to have some actual buttons that I could glue onto here or tape onto here. If you don't have actual buttons, no big deal. Your Robbie doesn't have to look like mine. You can design it however you want. 
Now, one thing that I think is missing from this robot is that mine does not have arms. If you wanna make some arms for your robot, that could be a fun addition to make it look even more robotic. I think a way you could do that is by twisting up some foil and making it into a stick. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say I just have this piece of foil here. Maybe it was like a scrap piece of foil or something. I could take this and kind of roll it up. So it's like, kind of like a tube. Mine is long enough that I could actually cut it in half and make two arms. If yours isn't long enough, then you'll just have to do that twice. But now I can take this and I can tape it on to the side over here and turn it into an arm. If you wanna use a different material for your arms, go right ahead. Maybe you have something else at home that makes more sense for you. One thing I do think is probably missing still is like a hand of some sort. I'll let you figure out how you want to add that. If you don't want your robot to have arms or hands or legs or whatever, then that's up to you too. Okay, after you have added features like a face or clothes or arms or whatever you want, you'll have to make some number cards. This will be a fun activity for you to do with your family members because if you make the number cards, then you can demonstrate how a function machine works to your family members. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I almost forgot the magic part of Robbie, the hidden part. I almost forgot to show you how to make the bag. Okay, so you're also going to need a Ziploc bag for this. I have a Ziploc bag that looks like this. It has a green top and I don't want people to see that that green top when I put it in his head here, if I attach the green like this, I'm attaching it to the back flat back here. Now, if people looked really closely, they could see that green. See how it's, it's um, pretty evident there. I'm gonna wanna cut that off so that it's only the plastic part of the bag. So I'm gonna cut off this green zipper part because I actually don't ever need it to zipper. Okay, so now I have a little bag that looks like this. If your bag doesn't have a green zipper like mine, then you don't have to cut it off. The whole point of cutting that off was just so that people don't see that other color because no one's really supposed to see this bag at all. Okay, so I'm gonna use my new box here and I'm gonna take my bag and open it up like this. I'm gonna take this back part of the bag, so just the one side. See how I'm not touching this other side of the bag? I'm gonna put it in this hole here. I'm still just holding on to the back part. And now I'm going to attach it, just the back part of the bag, to this back part of the opening back here. Now I can just use tape to do this, or if you have like glue or something, that might work. See how I'm just taping this back part of the bag. Now, my bag is really kind of dangly and I don't want it to be really like flapping. So I'm gonna put a few more pieces of tape just to make sure that it stays sturdy and that no one is able to see it. Okay, now when I drop a number in here, see how it didn't fall all the way out? That's because that plastic bag caught it. You can see the number. You can see the um, number card right in there. I could also drop it in front of the bag and it does fall all the way out, but that's not really my goal, right? My goal is to make people think it's gonna come out, but really another number is already sitting down there. Okay, so if I'm going to show, 
uh, my family how this function machine works, I'm gonna take a number and put it on this chair first, but I'm gonna do it in a way that they can't really see it. So I'm maybe sneaking to put this number down here um, since I have this opening. See how you can't see my hand because it's in the box coming from the back. If I take this eight and I drop it in, I'm gonna drop it into the plastic bag, but it's going to look like the number went all the way through and came out the other side, but it came out a different number, right? The number it came out at was 11. That means my audience has to guess what was the rule that Robbie the robot was using when he changed that number. Okay, you can choose whatever numbers you want to write on your paper or your cards. You can choose whatever rules you want. You can do add, subtract, doubles. You can look in your math journal if you want some ideas for um, numbers that can go in a function machine because we have all sorts of function machines in our math journal. But try this out and see if your family can guess the rule that your robot was using when it changed the number. See if your family can think that it's magic too. I hope you have fun making your own magic number machine out of materials you find at home.